Hi, I'm Ben with Sennheiser. I'll be the first to congratulate you on the purchase of your brand new Sennheiser portable camera wireless system. Perhaps you just bought a system or you're, maybe you're looking at buying one. In either case, we're gonna go through some of the components, show you what they look like, how they work, how to set it up, and answer any questions you may have. Uh, let's get to it. All right, here we have the EW100 ENG G3 camera set. This is a very versatile and one of our most popular sets that we offer. It includes a portable transmitter with a ME2 lavalier microphone, as well as a SKP100 G3 plug-on transmitter. This will convert other sources into wireless, and it includes a receiver, uh, which will be mounted on your camera. Let's take a look at what's inside the box. All right, taking a look at what comes inside the kit, we will open up the carton and slide out the inner carton. On top, you'll have the instruction manual and associated literature. We'll put that to the side for now. And we'll take a look. We have two uh, components here which look very similar, but they are pretty different. Uh, this one is the transmitter. Uh, you can tell it's a transmitter because it says body pack transmitter on the back. And it has a mic line input where you would plug a microphone into it. Uh, we'll put that off to the side. The second component would be the receiver. Um, this is denoted on the back by its diversity receiver uh, indication. And it has the AF out uh, jack uh, on it. This would be the piece that mounts onto your camera and receives the signal. We'll put that to the side. The SKP plug-on transmitter here. Uh, this guy here has an XLR port on it and you can plug this into any source that does not require phantom power and it will make it wireless. A popular uh, use for this would be the uh, combination with a Sennheiser K6 slash ME66 combo. And you can use this to make a shotgun microphone, a wireless shotgun microphone. Pretty cool stuff. You get some accessories, which are important. We have the ME2 lavalier, which is an omnidirectional lavalier, and it will plug right into the body pack transmitter with a locking ring. And you'll have two output cables, which go from the receiver to your camera. This is the CL100, which is an XLR type output cable. And then you have the CL1, which is a right angle 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch output cable. Uh, this is mostly used for consumer cameras or those that have this type of jack. You'll also get the CA2 camera shoe adapter. This is a hot shoe mount, which just provides a physical way to mount the receiver on top of your camera. And of course you have your AA batteries. Let's talk about setting it up. Okay, now that we have everything out of the carton and on the table, uh, we can identify all the components. Uh, here we have to do the initial setup about attaching the cables we need to connect as well as putting the batteries into all the devices. So let's start with the batteries first. Uh, the body packs simply open up uh, by pushing the two tabs on the side and you take your two AA batteries and insert them uh, as the diagram shows. Nothing should power on at this point um, if it does power on, please turn it off and we'll get to that step in a moment. Um, batteries are in the two body pack transmitter and the receiver. I'll take the uh, plug on and I'll slide the door out here and we will also insert the batteries into the compartment. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Um, the next step would be to assemble the lavalier and get that ready for usage. We have the lavalier here as it comes. Um, you have a little clip that comes with it and this clip is kind of a spring-loaded deal. So you, uh, this is the ME2. Um, there are different types, but um, they work pretty much the same way. We'll insert this around the microphone body and let go and it'll clamp it. And then we have a, a little top hat kind of windscreen here. Uh, looks like a little dome, if you will. And this is simply a pressure fit on top and helps prevent against unwanted wind noise or plosives from your talent. Uh, once that's attached there, uh, we're pretty much good to go on the lavalier. Now we can plug the lav right into the pack that we need it to. Um, they look very, very similar, so we're gonna have to take a look here. Um, on the back, it's body pack transmitter, so that's the one we want. You wanna make sure you plug this into the transmitter, of course, and not the receiver. So I will take the tip here and plug it in. I will tighten down the neural nut just snugly, don't have to crank it too hard, and that is considered set up, ready to go. Uh, lastly, we're gonna take the appropriate output cable. I have an XLR-based one here and an eighth-inch one. Uh, depending on the type of camera you're about to hook it up to, uh, you'll, you'll have to choose the appropriate cable for your camera. Uh, let's use the 3.5 millimeter 
and we'll put it right into the receiver, into the AF out jack. Same fashion, plug it in and just kind of tighten it down until it's snug. Now on to the actual setup of the internals of the receiver and transmitter. All right, in order to attach the receiver to the camera that we're gonna use, we're gonna need to put the CA2 shoe mount inside the belt clip of the receiver, and we're gonna take this whole assembly now and slide it into the camera's hot shoe mount, like so. Once it's uh, in there, you'll just tighten down the wheel underneath in order to snug it up. Next, we're just going to plug it into the side. All right, in order to make our audio connection to the camera of our choice, we are going to take the attached audio output cable. In this case, it's the CL1 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch, and we'll find the camera's microphone port, and we'll simply insert it into the side. For an XLR type of connection for the audio, we will use a CL100 cable, and we will plug it into your camera's XLR input like so. Okay, we've made the necessary connections and attached the receiver to the camera that we're gonna use. Now, everything else is off. What we're gonna do is open up the flap and turn on the receiver. So we simply open up the flap, press the on off button one time, and the receiver will come to life. After a brief welcome screen, you're on the main operating screen. We'll show you really quickly what the screen is all about. You've got your battery level over to the right. Uh, you've got your RF and AF meter. The RF and AF meters indicate how much uh, signal that you're getting. Uh, RF is radio signal, like bars of reception on your cell phone. And AF means every time you talk, it'll visually show you how much signal you're getting. There are different screens that you can cruise through on the front here um, by pushing the up and down arrows, but essentially they all show you the RF and the AF and the important things like the battery indicator at all times. What we're gonna do next is to press the set button one time to get into the menu. Now, inside the menu, you'll have a bunch of different options like squelch and sync, exit, advanced, auto lock, AF out, name, you can name it if you want, frequency preset, what we're looking for is the easy setup. So you can scroll up or down until you find easy setup. We'll press set one time to select that menu option. And inside the easy setup menu, there are three different options. There's current list, scan new list, and exit. There's also a reset list. What we're gonna use is the scan new list. So two things to remember, easy setup and scan new list. I'll hit set to confirm that we wanna scan a new list and it's gonna go through approximately at 1,680 frequencies and see what's going on out there in the RF environment. Um, it's a wise idea to do this at every shoot that you're gonna do because the environment can change uh, from where you're at, at home or your studio to where you're actually doing the shoot. After about 60 seconds or so, uh, the bar will complete and it'll come back to us with a report on what's open for frequencies. All right, the scan is completed and the receiver is now coming back to us and saying, bank two has 12 channels free. Because there's a maximum of 12 channels in each bank for this particular series, um, 12 is a great number. That's uh, every channel is free. If you're using more than one camera system in the same frequency range, you'd want them to be on the same bank number but different channels. You can scroll through if you wish and see all 20 banks and how many are free. Any of them with a 12 on it or 11, or honestly, as long as there's more than one free, uh, it will work and, and be fine. So there's a lot of channels that we can use in this particular environment. What we're gonna do is gonna select bank two and a channel underneath it. So I'll highlight it bank two, I'll hit set. Now it says bank two dot one or b dot ch bank dot channel. Uh, the frequency is displayed underneath what it actually is and it's a preset. So we can do a two dot one or two dot two or whatever number you'd like. It really doesn't matter because we know that this channel is free. So I'll pick two dot three just because it's there. Press set and now it's stored. We have effectively scanned out a free channel and tuned the receiver to that free channel on this uh, particular device here. What's left now to, is to sync it up to the transmitter. All right, we've locked in the frequency on the receiver. Now we have to put that same frequency on the transmitter that we're gonna use, whether it's the body pack or the SKP plug-on transmitter. So we're still in the easy setup menu. We have to get back out of this menu. You can either find the exit by scrolling up or down, or you can hit the on off button as your escape key to kind of get back out. We're gonna hit exit here with a set button. Now we're at the main menu, and we're gonna look for a menu item called sync, S-Y-N-C. So we can scroll up or down until we find sync, there it is. 
What the sync function does is it actually has an infrared transmitter which beams the frequency over from the receiver to the transmitter of your choice. Let's take a quick look at the transmitter. The transmitter is the same kind of thing and we'll power it on with the on off button. If you look here, there's an infrared window, which is kind of a purplish colored plastic on both the receiver and the transmitter. When we activate the sync function, we want those to be in alignment so that you can infrared beam over the information. So we're on a receiver here, we find the sync menu, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll hit set. It's waiting now with a sync logo for us to line these two windows up. And uh, if I do it like so, you should see a check mark. A check mark means that we've successfully synced up the transmitter to the receiver and they should have the same frequency. We can confirm this by the RF light is now lit green, meaning that we have RF. And if I exit back out to the main operating screen on both, uh, you'll see that they're on the same frequency and uh, everything is a go. So right now we're pretty much lined up and ready for operation. Let's show you how to do this with the SKP real quick. Okay, we have the SKP transmitter here, and this is basically one of the body pack transmitters with an XLR connection right into it, and we're gonna sync it up pretty much the same way. Uh, what we'll do first is we'll turn it on with the on-off switch, uh, press until it lights up, and we get the Sennheiser display. And then I'll attach uh, the desired microphone or XLR cable or whatever you wanna make wireless into the front end here. I will simply put it together, push it in, and then there's a little locking ring that you can screw until it's uh, all the way tightened up and the microphone will be firmly attached. This is all set up, now we're ready uh, to do our infrared sync. Before we do, uh, please be aware that the infrared window is here, right to the left of the display. Okay, our SKP is plugged into our microphone and we have both devices on. Our receiver, we're gonna go back into the menu and find the sync function the same way. So I'll hit set to go back into the menu Go up or down until I find the sync function, S-Y-N-C. I'll press set. It's awaiting now. The logo is telling me it's ready for the sync, and I will take my powered on SKP and simply hold it up in the air, uh, I don't know, about six inches away or so. If you don't get a check mark right away, uh, you might want to increase the distance or move it around until you do. Uh, the check mark we just saw indicates that we have the same frequency, everything is set. RF light is indicating we have active RF or radio activity on that channel and we're good, but you have to make sure that there is only one transmitter on at a time. You cannot have the SKP and the body pack with like the lavalier, for example, on the same frequency, powered on, transmitting at the same time. It will not work that way. So it's either one or the other, but you do have the option to use both. If you do wanna use more than one microphone, uh, you simply have to get another receiver to catch that signal simultaneously. The next thing we want to discuss is the levels of the system. There are two different levels or volume settings, if you will, on the receiver and the transmitter. On the receiver, we have the AF out function. Uh, AF out determines the master output volume or your overall output volume before it reaches your camera. Since every camera is a little different, the AF out is completely adjustable and it will be tailored to whatever camera you're using. So we'll hit the set button here to go into the menu and we'll find the AF out menu. Uh, the AF out menu here, and we'll hit set to go in. Factory default for a camera system should be about zero dB. This is a pretty good level to start with with an XLR connection, and you can try this to see how it works. If it's not loud enough, you can certainly increase it up to about plus 12 dB, which is the maximum, or down zero is the default, all the way down to negative values such as negative 30 dB. A couple basic guidelines, if you're using an XLR or a three pin full size microphone connection, the zero dB would be a good place to start. If you're using a digital SLR camera that's expecting a mic level, you might wanna try negative values like negative 12 or negative 18 to start and get you in the ballpark. Um, every camera is different, so this is something you're gonna to have to experiment with to get the best results. Okay, here we have the body pack transmitter with a lavalier attached, and if we uh, turn on the light here so we can see, You'll see the AF meter is moving up and down every time I talk. And uh, the idea is that you want to get as close as to 100% or full level without going over. If you go over, it's called clipping, and clipping is undesirable because it can lead to distortion and other unwanted sounds in your video. So to get the best sound possible, you might want to try anywhere from about 40 to 90% on an average of where the level is going up and down. If it's too low, it won't sound good, and if it's over the top, it won't sound good. So you got to get a happy medium. The way we adjust this is with the sensitivity menu. I'll hit set to go into the menu and up or down until you find the sensitivity. 
Um, these are values starting at zero, and as you go down, it gets less sensitive, with zero being full blast. I'll hit set to go into the menu. Negative 30 is uh, the default and where it starts, but if you want, you can adjust it up or down and to get the right value for your shoot. Keep in mind, louder voices are gonna need less sensitivity, while uh, quieter voices will need more. So you're gonna have to experiment to find the optimum results for you. Well, that about wraps it up. There are some additional resources that we want you to be aware of. Uh, the Quick Start Guide, which is included inside the box, covers a lot of the features that we went over today. And for the advanced features, the proverbial instruction manual contains all you need to know. We hope you found this video informative and useful, and you can use some of these tips on your next video shoot.